today's video is a little different. Um, today's video is actually on a camera lens. For those of you that follow my channel, um, this is not going to be some camera channel suddenly. It's still going to be, you know, computer enthusiasts, water cooling, etc. Um, but I made this video because I could not find another video of the RF100 macro that wasn't from a camera store or a Canon ambassador or something like that. And for those of you guys who are into photography and also computer enthusiasts, you know, just people like me with, you know, gear issues in terms of camera gear, computer gear, whatever it may be. Um, so this is just my quick take on this lens. I'm not a professional photographer, nor my professional lens reviewer, but I'm just going to show some sample images. I'm going to show the focus breathing. Um, that spoiler doesn't really exist and just talk about the lens and um, how I think about it. Um, I'm fairly new to macro photography, so I don't, you know, know how to get those super close stat shots. I mean, I, ha I have an idea how they're done, but I didn't try it on these. Um, my usage for this lens would more be like for product and for, you know, not extreme macro. Okay. So with that said, I've had the EF version of this lens before and uh, while I no longer have it, I can tell you that with the adapter on, uh, this lens is about the same length as the EF with the adapter. So EF plus adapter is about the same length as the RF 100 macro. Now in the box, you get the lens, the two caps and you get a lens hood and you get the good old Canon bag. Now, um, this lens is fairly light. Um, it is plastic construction, uh, plastic and metal, just like all the other RFLs. Um, in terms of length, it's, it's a pretty long lens. You can see there's a 50 and 35, which is, you know, got more girth, but you get an idea, okay? Um, the lens has the focus limiter over here. You have the AFMF stabilizer and the lock that I missed when I first got the lens was the lock ring. I mean, sorry, the lock key here for the SA control, which I will talk about in a little bit. The This lock is extremely hard to miss. And when I first got my, uh, got this lens out the box and I put it on my R R5, I couldn't figure out why the SA control didn't turn. And it's because here, I'll, I'll show you guys actually. So this is my R5. When I, when you mount the lens onto the body, the lock key, which is over here, is actually hidden by your fingers. So when I went to go twist it, it was just stuck. So it's a little bit kind of in this funny position here. You take the lock out and once you unlock it, you can turn the ring. Now, when you turn it to the neutral position, there's a slight clicking feedback. And that is the only position where you can engage the lock again. Okay. So if you have it in any other position, that's not neutral, it will not engage the lock. So I don't know how this whole entire mechanism works inside. All I know is I've personally found the SA control to be kind of gimmicky. It kind of just adds like a layer of Vaseline to the photo. <laughs> it's supposed to be able to let you adjust the blurry I guess the bokeh level, uh, you know, foreground, background kind of blur, but it just seems to do this random blurring to me. But um, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm using it wrong. Like I said, I'm not a professional, so I don't know. But uh, the lens I'm going to compare this to is the only other macro lens I own, which is the 105 Sigma DGDN for Sony FE and L mount. Now, you may be wondering why I don't compare it to another macro lens for Canon, because I don't own one. Um, this video right here is being shot on an A1. I will compare this lens on the A1, which is 50 megapixel, to the R5 with the RF100 2.8, which is 45 megapixel. Now, five megapixel, not a huge difference. So we will, you know, pixel peep a little bit. But yeah, this lens is extremely sharp. And, uh, you know, it's 800 bucks. It's 700 bucks if you have an EDU discount or some other Sony discount. So it's half the price of the RF. So I, you know, I'm not gonna say much, but I just tell you this, this lens is incredible. <laughs> it doesn't take away much from the RF though. So um, another few quick words on the focusing. Uh, this lens focuses extremely quick. 
Um, it does tend, you know, once in a rare while, if you don't have the limiter set, it will get lost a little bit, uh, which is fine. Um, but it has almost no focus breathing or very little focus breathing. Um, I will show some sample images. I will show some you know, focusing back and forth and I will, you know, point it at a bright light at night, uh, show you some of the bokeh and that pretty much wraps it up. Um, I hope it's helpful. And uh, let's move on to the sample images. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Um, I'm not used to doing this, so bear with me. Uh, I have the Sony on the left. Uh, you can probably tell by the yellow tinge. Uh, um, I really should have used RAWs, but yeah, I accidentally was changing cards on the, on the Sony and I, I messed up the settings on there. So normally I have one card to RAW, one card JPEG. And yeah, so pretty much I ended up with JPEGs, only able to keep the JPEGs. Um, so that's why they're JPEGs. Uh, okay, so, but rest assured, I don't have any additional sharpening or anything like that turned on. Uh, I have pretty much the most neutral stuff going on in terms of the profile. Um, but if we look in the center here, uh, I aimed for the kind of the eye, nose region with manual focus. These are all manual focused. I aimed for the nose, um, but it seems like I got a little bit more closer to the eye on the Canon. Uh, these were all shot on a tripod uh, and I only adjusted the aperture and obviously the shutter speed so forth, but nothing moved. And you can see the Sigma does look a little bit sharper actually than the Canon does. Uh, if we look at here, this area versus the eye, which seems to be the sharpest point on the Canon. Um, but definitely the out of focus area transition is nicer on the Canon than the Sigma. This kind of just seems to be like in out. Um, yeah, so I, I think if we, I mean, looking elsewhere, the Canon does have that better contrast for sure. And the Sigma seems sharper on towards the left hand side than the Canon does. If we come to the right and look at the autofocus areas here, ooh, the Canon looks sharper here on the right hand side of the bill than the Sigma does. So it seems like left side is a little better on the Sigma, right side is a little better on the Canon, but center sharpness still kind of going towards the Sigma. But you can see here, yeah, they're both very sharp and uh, we'll take a look at the F8. So here they are at F8. Um, we'll try to get in the center here. If my Lightroom will cooperate. And once again, it seems like, see, this is the strange thing, right? Because earlier the Canon was on the eye and now it seems to have moved up a little bit to the brow area, even though it seems to have shifted which is kind of strange, but yeah, that is strange. It did shift up, hmm. but yeah, this Sigma is still pretty much same spot. Um, the cheeks, the eye here and yeah, same story. Let's take a look. Ooh, let's take a look here. It's sharper on the left. See, as I go towards the left, you can see the Sigma is just sharper on the left, uh, still. And I go all the way to the corner yeah it tends to blur out but let's come back out a little bit go to the top top left and yeah the Canon is better contrast still and they're kind of a little sharper on the top left on the Canon and come here to the right hand side of the bill the Canon is sharper for sure yeah for sure the Canon is sharper here you can just see that that is that is a lot sharper and just more detailed um, but dead center which I, I mean I guess if you're stacking shots of macro whole whole frame matters but center sharpness I, 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 I think I really do think the Sigma is sharper like yeah and the Canon shifted to this area over here yeah so all right next shot is f10 um, probably should have stopped it down even more but 
Sorry about that. I didn't think about that when I was doing it. So now here we are at F10. Uh, let's come back to where I tend to focus. And it seems... Yeah, it seems like the... Yeah, the cannon definitely went up a little bit more. That's strange. Yeah, it seems to like go up <laughs> towards more towards the forehead. Um, as, I, as I step down. Um, but yeah... I guess the, the really pixel peeping it, it seems that way. Uh, it does seem to have shifted a little bit. Um, maybe it's user error on my end, but, but that is, that's interesting. Um, other than that, uh, both are extremely sharp. Uh, we come to the right, the cannon looks better, for sure. Just all over, just looks a whole lot better. Um, and if we come to the left, where the Sigma's been better for the most part, Let's take a look here at this seal here. Yeah, the Sigma is stronger on the left-hand side still. Um, everywhere I look, except for this top corner. Wait, is that where it kind of lines up with his forehead? Yeah, right? It seems like this part, yeah, huh. That's interesting. But, yeah, the Sigma is... Keeping up pretty good outside of the contrast area, in terms of contrast, but yeah. So overall, I mean, they're both extremely sharp, um, and the Sigma has been pretty much, like you know, no one said anything bad about that lens at all outside of the focus breathing. It does kind of hunt sometimes. So here are some of the photos I took in the park. It was kind of late that day, or it was pretty much around seven already, so the ISO is a little high. Um, but yeah. I, I took this at 1 160th of a second and it pretty much came out sharp stabilization did its job um but yeah i mean overall in real world i mean these are jpegs i mean straight out of camera it is what it is uh they're not this is not on like any vivid or anything like that it's just on regular standard um for my standard setting i think i do have um I think I have this contrast turned down by one. And, um, yeah. Uh, see, this is what I was talking about earlier. I remember when I took this photo, I tried to focus over here. And it focused here. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, I can't reproduce that at home. Uh, I did try. But if we come here again, this is another shot. Just some flowers in the park. And if I come here, I can tell that it's focused here and I meant to focus here. So I, I don't understand that. Hmm. And here's another one of a bee uh, on this flower here. And once again, it's not on the bee, it's slightly below where I intended. You can see that. And I don't, I don't get that. That seems to happen quite a bit. Um, this one. Also here, you can see it's lower. I was trying to get this B in all these shots here. Uh, granted, well, this is 160. I probably should have shot this a little faster <laughs> for the B. But he wasn't really moving that quick. And that doesn't explain why I keep hitting over here instead of over here. So that's strange. Um, I used uh, spot focus for all of these, by the way. So here's one. Background is very creamy on this shot. Um, so here's another one, a little more detailed. You can see it's very sharp. Yeah, so, I mean, overall, it's it's a very nice lens, and here's a squirrel on the floor. Um, I don't know if the... Uh, I turned on IAF when I saw him, obviously. I don't think it got him in the eye. <laughs> it, more like, it looks more like I got him in the paws. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I had the camera on the floor. I was just hoping the eye would catch on this shot, and I guess it didn't. Um, but, oops. Let's open this one up. But yeah, um, yeah, it seems definitely have gotten this plane over here with the foot and the branch more so than his eye. And here's another close-up shot of some flowers. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be disappointed at all. Just... Yeah, but it does not seem to focus where I intend to focus. It's just kind of funny. Um, 
And here's a really close up shot. Uh, let me try to zoom out. But here's another close up shot here. And I, I always try to aim for the center on these. And I think I got it, but yeah. I mean, this is my first, like this, I know this isn't super macro, but this is macro-ish for me. So yeah, these are just some of the sample photos. Um, overall, you know, I'm happy with it, but this focusing thing is something I definitely need to look into. A uh, quick look at the bokeh circles, um, bokeh balls, whatever you want to call them. Uh, this is at uh, 2.8, and if you see wide open, you got some cat's eye even in the center. Uh, and at f4, it's pretty much, by the time you get to f4, it's pretty much just perfect circles all the way throughout. Um, you see even in the corner, it's already a circle. So at f4, but definitely f2.8, it's just cat's eyes everywhere. Um, some circleish, but you know, in the center, you see there's a lot of cat's eye going on at 2.8. But it's very clean at f4. Just a quick look at the flaring. Uh, I just shot this at a bright light downstairs. Uh, there's definitely some flaring going on for sure. So I have the camera pointed at three objects in video mode. Uh, as you can see, I'm cycling through the CPU box in the front the motherboard, small motherboard in the middle, and the big motherboard in the rear. And you can see it goes from one to the next without any hesitancy. It's very quick, very smooth, and very accurate. And for people that watch my channel normally, I guess this is a teaser of what's to come. So in summary, um, I think if you have the EF version, you can probably wait. Uh, I think the price is a bit high for what you get uh, compared, I think the original EF one, the L was like $800 for a while. And this is coming in at 1400 it's a bit high um but you know if you don't want to play the adapter game this is the price you have to pay uh, with that said thanks for watching and take care